And ladies and gentlemen, our second bout of the evening is in the featherweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage, Kavicha Koritza. You're watching Georgian Fighting Championship 15, and the next bout on the card is a featherweight contest. Kavicha Koritza has a record of three wins and two defeats. He started his professional career with three fast submission wins. Looked very promising at the start. Then he's had two losses in a row, a points defeat, and then a point uh, finished by technical knockout. Had one fight as an amateur on top of that. That was a very fast armbar win. Be interesting to see here, can he get back to winning ways? I say often it's what, how a fighter comes back from the losses that defines them as a fighter. And this is what Karitsi has to do today. Ladies and gentlemen, now welcome his opponent to the red corner, Rafael Movesesiani. So standing in his way of that comeback victory, also from Georgia, is Rafael Movesesiani. Now, Movesesiani is 28 years of age and making his debut here on the Georgian Fighting Championship. No fights as of yet as a professional. He weighed in on the limit of 65.8 kilograms, and he stands 170 centimeters tall. So Karitsi actually has a 12 centimeter reach advantage. Quite a lot for a fighter at featherweight. Be interesting to see here, does the experience of Karitsi play out? And how is his head after coming off two losses in a row? And a wink and a gloves up there from a very confident looking Mob Sessiani. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC featherweight bout. So please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 29 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 182 centimeters tall and has a record of three wins with two losses. Representing Georgia, please welcome Hervicha Koritza. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 28 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 170 centimeters tall and is making his professional debut. Also from Georgia, please welcome Rafael Mosesiani. International GFC 15, second bout on the card. It's a featherweight contest. Corizzi in the blue, Mosesiani in the red. We have Mosesiani making his debut here. Karitza coming very confident, especially with that cartwheel right at the beginning, Ian. Nice yeah. job, though, by Mafisiani. Karitza coming off these two losses. Let's see how that affects him. Oh, oh, nice left hook. That was a clean left hook to the jaw. Dropped him. He recovered quickly there, Ian. Very quick indeed. Mafisiani threw a nice right hand just before that. It did miss the mark, but it was clean and it was straight. Karitsi looking light on his feet, bouncing around there, showing his legs have not stiffened up from that left hook. I think maybe caught him off balance. He needs to be careful with his legs. Oh, and again, his there's a big low. right hand. Using that whizzer nicely there in the clinch. Karitsi, the bigger man of the two. Obviously, they've weighed in exactly the same weight. Yeah, they both ripped to shreds at the weigh-in yesterday. Ian. Oh, unbelievably so. I mean, for a man who's making his debut, he's doing really well. Movsesiani. He's avoiding the takedown. Just doesn't seem to have that strength or the, 
the ability to take his man down though. He's trying, he's tried the outside hook, he's tried the inside hook. Yeah, he's tried the hip throw. When you've got a taller guy with that big heavy whizzer, it is difficult it's to It's very get difficult, but there's a guillotine. He's got a guillotine. Again, the smaller man putting a guillotine on the bigger man is quite difficult. He's dropped down to mount position. So he's moved round the side now. It wasn't a full mount, but there's the half guard. Yeah, so he's passed through to half guard. He seemed to settle in half guard, looking to work the ground and pound. I love the half guard for ground and pound. It's a great position. A lot of fighters don't really utilize the half guard. They try to get the side or sit in the mount, but half guard, I love it. The leg that's on the outside, which will be the left leg of Kuritza. He needs to slide that right under the armpit. If he slides it under the armpit, he gets a nice, nice steady base. You see the legs going back into guard now. He's got the knee back in. So Movsesiane back to the full guard. Kuritza. Oh, nice little nice shot elbow. elbow. That was lovely. That thudded through the canvas there. So Movsesiani looks relaxed underneath as he tries to tie up an arm. Well, for his professional debut, he is relaxed, Ian. Nice little short elbow to the stomach there by Kuritza. And there's the long arms coming to play. Yes. The long reach, trying to go for the armbar though, of Sessiani, the short little legs. He's trying to spin around for the armbar, but the elbow of Karitza is out and out of trouble. Yeah, really well framed there from Karitza. It's going to be difficult when he postures, his head's so far away from of Sessiani. Again, you see Again, that, big that elbow, elbow over, the, over top. the top. Having the long limbs is an advantage. Sometimes it can be a disadvantage, especially when you're being armbarred because you've got long limbs to grab a hold of, but it's working well for him with the elbows over the top. Yeah, so once he gets posted up and then he comes back down with the elbow, and he's doing a good job as well of using the inside bicep control. Trying to keep the inside position with his arms there. Yeah, it's always best to have your hands on the inside when you're in top position here. Great striking ability there, Karitza. Again, using that length to get right onto the jaw. You see, he used the palm there, Ian, onto the elbow. Bob Sessiani's not in a lot of trouble here, but he does need to do something from underneath. Yeah, he can't just I sit totally underneath. agree. He's not in a major amount of trouble, but he is taking damage and he is losing this round because of this. But great work back to his feet. What Mouth guard come out of Karitza. What we need to see here is Karitza keeping his hands up a little bit because he did seem susceptible to the strikes. Bob Sessiani throwing big Oh, nice shots. body kick. And again, Bob Sessiani was swinging though, wasn't he? That left hook caught him. Karitza went down. Nice level change there into the single leg. Movsesiani looking to push the head down, but didn't look to get an underhook there to stop the takedown. Now this could be a nice easy guard pass if he wants it. There's the half guard again. See, there's that knee. He needs to go under the armpit. He needs to base, base himself out nice and wide. I think when you can see the legs are open. I think, like you said, he's happy to sit in half guard. Elbows from here, though, Ian. It's, it, elbows from the half guard are amazing. Yeah, well, his hips are a little high and he's allowed the knee to get back in. So now he's got that butterfly hook and now with the right leg. Again, you see the headbutts to the body. Kicked off. Well, a great round there by Karitza. Definitely won that round for me, but no shame for Mavsesiani making his debut and did fantastic. Although on the bottom, most of this fight was never in any trouble. Yeah, Movsesiani had a really good first minute to the fight. If you watch here again, you see that left hook landed. Maybe a little wild coming back in to follow it up. But once it got to the floor, it seemed to be all Karitsi. Karitsi using his long reach inside the guard. And again, he felt that work, so he came back out for the single leg and again got the top half guard position. Well, we haven't seen Movsesiani in top position. So maybe this could be a game plan for him, whatever his corner is telling him. He's winning, he's winning the striking exchange, he's standing up. Let's see what he's like in top position. The crowd cheering there for Carizzi, I think. 
half the crowd for Mopsasiani and half the crowd for Karitsa here. So here we go, the start of round number two. Uh, referee Alexander Lunger there wanting the fight to wipe down. Too much water has been applied between rounds. Yeah, especially if there's a triangle or some form of choke submission. The water can help slip his arm out, slip his head out. A good referee from Alexander Lunger as we start round number two. Again, that body kick. Tries to go for the trip. I think he's going to get it. Yeah, lovely work. Needs to be careful, though. His head's exposed. Yeah, that was a nice trip into side control there, passing the legs. Lovely work, secure side control. Actually quite un unorthodox uh, <laughs> take down there, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> he landed himself in a very nice position, though. But he's happily gone back yeah, to half guard Yeah, put himself in the half guard. Yeah, he obviously likes that, that position. But the elbows from here with his right arm, he could be chopping down a whip. Yeah, I think I'd like to see the same posture he was using inside the guard from this half guard position. Again, that hand on the chin and then dropping the elbow off the hand. Mof he's, he's, he's got the right idea as Karitza from the half guard, but he's actually losing an arm by putting his hand around the head of Mof Sassiani. He's took it out now. I think he's going to be regarded again. Yes, he is. Yeah, again, each time he's, his head's down, but his hips are up, and that's what's allowing the space for the regarding. It's all about centre of gravity, Ian. Your hips have got to be down below your opponent. And here we see Mof Sessiani again. Needs to stand back up. He, needs he might to try get to... back up from here. He needs to use that cage wall. Well, I think he tried just for that split second. We can see damage now above the right eye. Bleeding quite heavily, quickly there from that last shot. And look There's now, the elbows. he's seen the bloody in and he's going for it like a shark. Well, he's a tough little dude. Mofsasiani just needs to learn how to get back to his feet from this position. He does. Sitting in the guard, he's not working, using the fence. And he's taken a lot of damage in the process. Karitsi, I think, has worked out very early. There's the armbar. The, oh. There's the armbar. The His elbow elbow's free. clear. Yeah, the elbow was clear. But that's one of the disadvantages to having long limbs. It was a great attempt, though, Moff yeah, Showing good awareness from underneath, but I just would like to see him make a decision on does he want to stand back up or is he going to attack for the submissions? The head is down, so if he wants to work his legs up for the high guard, he can. Two and a half minutes off, we're through the second round. Again, Moff Sessiani. It's going to be a long round for Moff Sessiani. Oh, he's back up, but again, shoots for a double. Now the single. This Again, time. with that little sit-down, takedown. So he's looked for the Kimura to defend there. Again, he wasn't looking to get the underhooks or anything in between him and his opponent. Mofsesiani just looks that little bit flatter on his back now. He's grip-vining that half-guard. Yeah, we're into the second half of the fight now, and the fight is telling its toll on the eye there. That's the swelling above the right eye of Mofsesiani that split. And again, you see Kuritsa, a good job of keeping his arms on the inside, but he's just not doing as much with it as he could. You know, he could be, he's just throwing the little short punches inside. He could be pinning those arms down and working the elbows. I'd like the cup, to see him like posture up a little bit more as well. Widen that, that half guard base, knee under the armpit, nice wide, sit down, so he's backside down on the leg of Movsesiani. And then throw the shots. Nice up kick there. Yeah, he needs to be careful of that up kick. That's the second time off sessiani has gone for that. This There's time the he's got this the time. underhook, yes. But will it defend? <laughs> well spotted, Ian. <laughs> there we go. He's done a better job of defending oh. the takedown, but still, Karitsi is incessant. He just looks the smaller man. I mean, here at GFC, they have a weight limit to abide by, and then as long as they make that weight limit, they don't really tell you exactly what weight they weighed in at. Yeah, I think that's something we need to ask for at the next event because on my record it says they are both 65.8 kilograms. I don't think that's what they weighed in at. No, I think they made the official weight. That's the championship limit. 
Well, Karitsi, I thought at the way and I, I fought uh, a, a few fights at featherweight and I thought it was massive for a featherweight, 182 centimetres tall, absolutely ripped to shreds. He's one of the biggest featherweights I've stood next to. And he has now passed in the side control. This is better work with his hips low, actually, in side control. Moves around to north-south. Final 10 seconds. Well, it's another clear round now for Karatsi. And Moff Sessiani looks tired there, Ian. Yeah, he's, he's got to pull something out of the bag here. Make a break in the third round, I think. Well, there we go. There's the end of round number two. We have Karitsi again dominating from top position. Every time Moff Sessiani got up, and he didn't get up very often, Ian, it was tough for him. When he did get up, Karitsi grabbed a single leg and got the takedown again. I mean, don't get me wrong. Karitsi is winning this fight easily. But Moff Sessiani is making him work for it. Well, that was that lovely outside trip we saw then, like a valley drop onto the floor. And they had a similar trip to the other side. This one was more like the double leg, pulled the legs away, classical work against the fence. But again, they're showing the variety of takedowns, and each time, even when Mov Sessiani did get the underhook, he took him down fairly easily there, Ian. Yeah, there's one tired man, Mov Sessiani. His opponent does look the fresher of the two, but we know why, because he's been in top position. And Karitze was ready to go. Referee not happy with the amount of water that's been spilt in the corner. Yeah, Mof Sessiani. That was both times, I think. Yeah, they, they, they're pouring the water from the bottle onto their fighter. I understand you've got to freshen your fighter up, but sometimes there's no need to pour the full water bottle on them. So here we go, round number three. Karitsi in the blue, Mov Sessiani in the red. On our card, certainly Karitsi, two rounds up now. Yeah, Mov Sessiani needs to keep his distance, work on the inside and straight back out to the distance again. Because I just don't think he's got the skill or the the, the power to take his man down. No, I agree. And then you see Karitsi there using the front kick, which is again going to halt Mov Sessiani's forward action. Oh, nice. That was right underneath the shot. He's got the arm in guillotine there. But there's just so much space under yeah, the elbow. So much space. I'd be very surprised if he taps to this. But he could be sinking it in as he moves. He's locked the legs up. I don't think the pressure on the neck is enough. Any choke's got to cut the blood off on both the outside and the inside of the neck. And you can see there's just such a gap there. I think more than anything, it's going to take a lot out of the arms of Moff Yeah, he's got an arm in as well, Ian. The left arm of Karitza. He's doing a kind of a neck crank there. Oh, with now the it could work. Now it could work. If he's got mounted yep, guillotine. The... Oh, he needs to move off that cage. Karitza. Oh, he escapes well. Oh, Moff Sessiani must have thought it was his birthday for one second. Then all of a sudden, he's pushed off the cage. And it's, you've got to think, how much has that taken out of him mentally? You know, he, for the first time, he feels like he's in a top position, a better position, only to be reversed by Karitsi. Karitsi now in the full guard of Moff Sessiani. Both fighters looking tired here. Yeah, the head's down, the head's resting on the chest. Short shots to the body. So I talked in the walk down about the fact Karitsi had three submission wins very fast in his first three fights. And then he's had two losses, one on points and one by a TKO. So he's got to come back from these losses. And I think here, Ian, he's, this is going to be a good fight for him. The fact he's getting so much mat time, it's not a quick submission win. He's coming back from those losses and he's having to use heart here against a very tough debut fighter in Moff Sessiani. Yeah, when a fighter has his head down like that and his backside up in the air, you cannot create power with punches. These punches are to basically just show the judges that I'm winning the fight. And if the time goes, good it's call by the referee, great call. I was just explaining that these kind of punches are not there to win the fight. They are there just to make sure he's scoring on points. 
and I think the referee realised that, and that's why he split them up. Alexander Lunger, an M1 global veteran, a good fighter himself. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of uh, commentating. We've had the pleasure of commentating yeah. on this guy. We have. But again, we've... another takedown, Ian. Yeah, Ta again. Taking Moff Sessiani down at will. Moff Sessiani just doesn't seem to have the, the cardio, the conditioning to stop these takedowns or even to put up a fight, really. Well, he needs to try and work on his submission. There you go. He's trying to work around for the arm again. He nearly got it before. Yeah, his best work has really been when he gets his hips right yeah, out Carita, to one side or the Carita other. Carita might have pulled out the last time, but he's a lot more tired now. We're into the dying so 90 seconds of this fight here. Yeah, there's 90 seconds left to go, so why not try an armbar? Why not try a triangle? Carita is not as strong as he was in round two. Obviously, he's, he's burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, that head oh. down low, and he is showing his tiredness, you see there. Good call again. Yeah. We need to see some action. Oh, I think he's going to get the doctor to look at that cut. Oh, he's hitting him on the back of the head. I think, I think he had actually warned him earlier on for that as well. Wow, hitting the back so of the head. The, but It was the elbow in the back of the head. I've got to be honest, Ian. I, I didn't really see that. Well, yeah. I think he didn't want to give him a beneficial position for doing that, so he's, sat, he's put them back down on the floor. I mean, it's not going to make much difference. To I, would like, I would like to see where the elbows were, because if they're on the top of the head, then there the shouldn't be a problem. I think he'd come out to the side like that, and then he was elbowing down, so he's yeah, doing pretty similar. But, but in, 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 in the defence of Mofsasiani, uh, Karitz is actually putting his head there. Yeah. If he doesn't like it, sit up. Yeah. <laughs> and punch him harder. So there, that's better work from the posture guard. Just as we're saying, get your head up. He oh, does. oh, with 20 seconds left to Can go. Can he get a cut Good from behind Oh, arm no, bar. he leaves it. He did have the arm bar. He obviously felt it wasn't on. I feel that was his last chance there, Ian, to pull something out the bag. The final 10-second knocker has gone. And we are going to go to the judges' scorecards for the first time as Corizzi stands up. Walks off, hands in the air. And I said, it's how you come back from your losses that defines you as a fighter. And that was a very impressive performance. Kovica, Korytze. I wouldn't say punch perfect. He was caught with some good shots early on. However, he came back into the takedown and then dominated from the second half of round number one till the final bell three rounds of solid action there at featherweight and surely a unanimous points victory for Corizzi here's we see the replay this featherweight contest that was the one opportunity there that Movsesiani had. He nearly got the submission. But he was taken down and again, Karitsi dominated from Ladies top. Ladies and gentlemen, awarding the winner their prize for each fight will be the sponsor, Vitamin.G. And our winner, by unanimous decision, Kavicha Karitsa! I don't think there was any doubt there. Unanimous victory. Kakovica Korytsi of Georgia. His record betters now to four wins and two defeats. Here we see a replay of this featherweight contest. It was a cartwheel into the cage for Karitze, who looked confident right from the start. 